Okay guys, welcome to the channel. Uh, it has been quite some time uh, since our last upload, about four weeks. Uh, this was mainly because I had another surgery uh, in the early beginning of October. But I'm recovering well and I have started to edit uh, the old content I have filmed while I was still working. So I will probably not be able to work until the end of year, but uh, this will give me time to edit the videos that I have shot before and uh, to kind of give you more content so we can then start fresh. Uh, we will be back to scheduled programming about one video a week. So I hope you will learn a lot and enjoy the new content and I will see you in this video and in the next. Bye. Hello everyone, welcome back. Uh, today we are continuing with the A-pillar assembly. Now uh, we are starting to look on what we're going to do with the front of the car. Uh, we are thinking of actually disassembling it and taking it off. The A-pillar is now uh, starting to take its shape. We're going to weld it here because we need a patch here. Uh, this was taken from a replacement part. It's going to be welded here, uh, but we're not going to do an overlap uh, weld. We're going to do a, a joint well where we're going to cut it out and then going to weld the line where it uh, meets this is the inner portion of it as you can see the battery tray is inside already uh, so it's starting to take its shape the other side of the a pillar is going to come when we put on the door so we can start to adjust the gap for the door so this is the details that has to be followed uh, but yeah it's starting to take its shape and we're going to continue with the work So as you can see here is a joint weld, uh, we are doing now the lower portion. If we were to do an overlap that one metal would be lying on top of the other and then weld, it would look like garbage. So uh, the reason why people don't like doing this is mainly because it's more work. Because, because as you can see here, contours need to be exactly the same, so it looks nice, uh, but people tend to do an overlap on the cheaper repairs because it's faster and it's not so much work but you are having two metal parts one on the other and this causes corrosion and rust and also it looks like trash so you have to put on filler and stuff like that which is not appropriate for cars like this so take a little bit more time do it a little bit better so you're going to have a nicer car on the end and also you know people won't be saying behind your back that you are a, that you are a a shyster. Now with the removal of the under seal, we have taken a chisel and a hammer for the back of the car. Now this is a good solution if the under seal is very dry and it's going to go off nicely and you have a thick metal underneath that you're not going to damage. In the front, however, this solution is not the best and uh, if we were to have a perpendicular angle to the metal, we would actually bend it inward, which would then look like there was a hailstorm inside the engine bay, which looks like trash. So we're going to have another method now that I've tried recently and works really well. I'm going to show you it, it's using a heat gun and a chisel to actually guide the under seal away. It goes off pretty nicely. However, you have to be careful not to overheat metal, uh, otherwise your paint may crack and you can deform metal and stuff like that, get to all wavy. So kind of approach with caution, but the results are very nice and there's a little bit uh, last chance that you get the old bumpy metal in the engine bay because who wants to, fi uh, to put filler in the engine bay and then sand it and stuff like that it's just not a good solution now you see here here we have a chassis rail uh, this is a thick metal we're not going to damage it so we were able to get uh, away with the solution uh, with only the chisel and hammer but over here you see there's a thin metal and we don't want to get bumpiness all over the inner fender around the engine bay because if we were to open the engine bay and it looks like trash come on man
Take it easy. Before you take a heat gun, let's discuss some rules. First of all, don't stay on one point too long because you're going to burn stuff. Okay, that's not cool. The other point, take slow passes, heat the material gradually. So you're heating a larger surface in a slow amount of time. So don't put it on the max setting and just go crazy. You're going to burn stuff. So. Uh, even though you're going to take a lower setting, you're still going to smell a little bit of rubber. This stuff smells pretty badly, but you know, it's the name of the game. The other thing is uh, take your time, take it easy, and try to work uh, like a big lip that you can then start to fold down, sort of like this. You see, we have a nice lip here. Now we're going to heat the material from the inside because uh, if we were to uh, heated on the outside where we have the protection stuff would get gooey and we couldn't really poke it well uh, And also we don't heat the metal underneath. We're uh, Going to heat the surface and we have multiple layers and it's all just so messy So heat the metal and then start making a lip and then just try to roll it down uh, I think this is actually so far the best option you should wear gloves for this because it's heat and keep a window a big window or door or something open and wear a mask if you have one because this stuff smells pretty bad but you know we have to get it off before we start other repairs so uh, let's keep on working Okay, so one more interesting uh, thing when you are uh, repairing stuff like this, uh, as you can see here, we have cut the top of the wing mounting part, but not the bottom. The reason for this is that uh, you actually cut it so you can bend it and join them together on the same level. So you will have this edge aligned and also you have to align the holes, of course because if we, we were to put the replacement part on and then just draw and cut out and put it back in this edge might not have been the same as the original and then when you are missing a few millimeters here and then missing a few millimeters in the back when you're going to put on the fender at the end uh, you're going to have a larger gap or no gap with the hood and it's all going to look weird so you have to build it step by step and uh, make sure that the step you make now will help you on your next step uh, if this makes sense because you don't want to make too large uh, leaps when you're restoring because in these leaps you can do mistakes and uh, as mentioned before a few millimeters can make a big difference in the end so gradually uh, weld, it, weld it together so it's joined and have a nice uh, uh, same level and then start working your way towards the bottom uh, and this should keep your contours and your lines and levels for the body panels in check uh, so that when you're putting the car back together it should look like original so what we're doing right now is we put on the doors and the old fender just so we can kind of check for gaps so we can then uh, weld a pillar firmly uh, because if we would do it now we wouldn't be uh, exactly sure if everything will be okay uh, As you can see this is the assembly of the a pillar outer sheet metal has not been welded on yet uh, But the other parts are uh, spot welded This part here will be closed off later, but now we have to make sure that every gap is okay uh, this old fender, as you can see, is in excellent condition and will most likely sell for a, uh, a very good amount of money. I'm thinking about a thousand euros. <laughs> okay, so as you can see, we have a lot of junk, a lot of old protection and mud on the threads and on the bolts so we're going to clean it off a little bit I use a flathead screwdriver and a wired brush just to kind of loosen up the dirt that's on the head of the bolts and on the threads so we can ensure that the fitting of the wrenches and sockets are a little bit better uh, this will help our disassembling a little bit since the tools will be seated properly onto the bolts and onto the nuts 
uh, I like to clean off the area that I'm working on every time because I don't know it just makes the job a little bit easier now this is the old original axle that was on my car uh, this is not the one that I bought in Germany in the last video because this video has been filmed before that one so this is my original one but the newer one I have bought for lower control arms but the other one is roughly in the same condition so I will have to uh, use some of the parts from that one and from this one repair both so I can make one good solid axle uh, because both need a lot of repairs but I think we can manage to work something out then we can start to disassemble the front axle you see these flaps here are for the bolt not to be loosened up you put this one in the hole and then bend this one up so it cannot turn, this is before they had uh, anti-locking nuts. We had to cut these bolts because they are too rusty to be uh, unbolted. I made a foolish mistake of taking this bolt out but the damper is still in so it's going to hold the, the control arm to the subframe so it's not a big deal but I still put in the, a screwdriver just to be safe so the arm doesn't fall out. Uh, now we have the spring compressors on uh, so it doesn't jump out because it's loaded with uh, a lot of force and it can do quite a lot of damage and it can injure you now what we're going to do is try to get the damper out and then kick the control arm off to take the to take the spring off as you can see that's a long spring so we have a rear axle here that we're going to uh, take this trailing arms off and one hard rod and then stuff like this just so we can work on it we're going to take a look at what we can do with these as you can see they're rusty as hell I have taken apart the front and the back axle, the back axle partially. Uh, we have been working on a wheel well of the car. Uh, this is the finished product. It's some finishing up, but it is, it is roughly done. Now we are doing the floor of the car. This will be coming soon. Now the, a little bit uh, tougher thing is to do the, parts that you cannot actually buy new ones so some of this stuff will have to be uh, made from scratch but you know we have we are getting used to it by now with this car but this is it for today and it's pretty late we're hungry uh, and we're going to head home so uh, if you have any free time spare time feel free to drop by and help weld and grind and you know fix up manta bye have you noticed some hissing sound in my latest videos like when I was talking on the background it was like I couldn't figure out what that was I was thinking that maybe a GoPro microphone is a little bit funky or something but actually the air compressor was turned on and one of the hoses was cracked a little bit uh, but I couldn't find the source and it was hissing all the time and I couldn't uh, edit it out later so it was really frustrating but I hope that in the future videos uh, the sound quality will be better and also you know checky checky we're doing some stuff and you're going to hear it and see it how it's made what we've done in later videos